Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I'm excited to talk about TrueNAS Scale and its new update, Electric Eel. One big change is switching from Kubernetes to Docker for managing containers. And I will show you how to automate your Docker deployments using GitHub Action. If you're using TrueNAS Scale, you might know it's great for storage and running applications. With the new updates, even better, I'll show you how you can use these features to automatically deploy Docker containers. So whether you're running a home lab or just want a more straightforward system, this video is for you. Let's see how Docker and GitHub Actions can help you out on this latest TrueNAS scale release. But first off, a quick look at the tools that we are going to use. First is TrueNAS. TrueNAS Scale is a powerful open source system for storage. Docker, I don't think it needs introduction, but it's essentially a tool to put applications into containers, making them easier to run. And GitHub Actions automates our workflow, so we don't have to do everything by hand. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can deploy Docker applications on your TrueNAS Scale with two approaches. First option will be through the UI, and the next one is infrastructure as a code. So we will do everything from a GitHub repository. Earlier in this video, I show you how you can deploy your Docker containers on Proxmox. It's going to be relatively the same thing. So if you already know how to do that, probably you can skip a few chapters in this video as well. This is our systems high level overview. So by default, whenever we want to deploy something on our TrueNAS Docker host, we need to go to TrueNAS scale panel, go through the UI and click here, click there, and then deploy our application. It can be too much trouble if you want to keep all your deployments and everything in one place. Now let's replace this manual process with an automated process. Everything will start from my computer. I will push the changes that I have in mind to GitHub into this repository. Then, then based on the configurations that I made, this GitHub action runner will pick up jobs from this repository. Make sure to check my video on how I've created this GitHub action runner inside Proxmox. Then after GitHub action picked up the job, it will connect to my TrueNAS scale Docker daemon and deploy through this TCV port right here. So with this setup, we're going to have all of our infrastructure as a code in this repository. Whenever we want to change something, we only need to push our changes to this repository and the rest will be a breeze. First, let's see the manual way of deploying apps on your true NASA scale. First click on apps. First time you open this page, you need to enable application, which is just a single click. After doing that, you can click on discover apps, deploy one of these applications right here, or you can go with a custom app. In this case, I will just go with, let's say uptime Kuma, one of my favorite applications, click on install. Here I can mount Docker socket. Everything else should be fine and install. It's now successfully deployed. It's going to take a few seconds until the container shows up as running. Until that time, we can hit refresh a couple of times. And there you have it. It's been deployed on this board. So let's open it. And here's our deployed application on true NASA scale. We can check the logs of the container, see the files, grab a shell or whatever we want. So let's see the logs. Works just fine. First thing that I'm going to do is enable remote access to Docker daemon in my TrueNAS. So click on setting, go to shell, switch to root user. Then this is Docker's instruction for how you can enable remote access to your Docker daemon. I've linked it in the description. So grab this line here. We can already see these lines here. That's fine. From here, copy this last line and paste that 
here. Change this to four zeros and save and exit. Do system CTL daemon reload and system CTL restart Docker service. And if I run this, we can see that our Docker daemon is exposed on port 2375. I can check that by going to portainer, go to environment, add a new environment. It's a Docker standalone and it's Docker API. I'm going to name it TrueNAS149. Here, specify your TrueNAS IP address with the port. Click on connect and it's working. Now let's go to home. We can see our true NAS here and then containers. You can see that I'm running a container already. So if I go to apps, you can see I'm running sync thing and you can see the same thing here. We can check the logs. We can see the stats. It's using 38 megabytes of RAM. Now to get it started, let's deploy Watchtower on our true NAS Docker host. So I think you already know this repository that I have. In order to deploy things on my home lab, I've created this repository. If you want to know how to do the same, you can check this video that I will link up there. So my Watchtower file is already fine. The only thing that I need to do is go to my deploy file right here make a copy of Watchtower and specify the IP of my TrueNAS server. Let me walk you through this GitHub action workflow. Here we have a list of hosts and a stack name. For each member of this array, we're going to run this job with these information. So let's see how exactly it's going to work. The first thing that my runner needs to do is check out the repository. So everything that we have here, it's going to have as well. Next step is set up a Docker context. So based on these information, so Docker context name will be the stack name dash CTX with the Docker host, which is TCP IP of this host and port 2375. We're going to create a Docker context. Basically, Docker context is a way that you can connect to different Docker hosts from a machine. So, for example, when I run Docker PS, it's going to look at my default context, which in my case, default context is my own machine. But when I specify a different context, like my true NASA scale context, it's going to use that Docker daemon and execute my command. So if I run Docker PS, but on my true NAS scale context, it's going to give me this results. As you can see, I have Watchtower and sync thing running back to our GitHub action workflow. After setting up the context, I'm going to deploy the Docker compose. In this example, stack name.yaml will be the file that we want to deploy. So for Watchtower, watchtower.yaml will be our Docker compose file, watchtower will be our project name, and watchtower-context will be our context. So here, use the context that we just created right here. Use this file, the name of the stack.yaml, and pull the images which we specified in that stack. After all the images were pulled, I'm going to deploy the stack with Docker Compose up. After that, either way, we're going to delete the context that we created here. The reason why is when you create a context, it will stay in your GitHub action. And we don't want that. Because imagine you create a context with some configs, with some IP one time, and later you change the IP for the same stack. What happens is you're going to deploy your applications on a wrong machine or on a machine that doesn't exist. Let's deploy it and see the results. Okay, deployment is done. If 
we go to our true NAS, we're not going to see our watchtower here because we didn't deploy it through their standard process. But if I go to my portainer, I can see that in this environment, I have watchtower installed. Let's see the logs and it's up and running. And there you have it. Now you have a smooth automated Docker deployment process on your true NASA scale with GitHub Actions. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check this one as well. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create your own Telegram AI chatbot using N8N, another self-hosted application. Thanks for watching. Until next time.